Good morning my sisters and brothers and welcome back to the Oakwood Advent devotional series where today we find ourselves in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1 where I'm going to read verses 20 and 21 and share something that I hope will cause you to pause and reflect on the truth of who our Saviour is and what it is he really came to do. So Matthew 1 verse 20. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. You know, there's a scene in the movie Pulp Fiction where Bruce Willis's character gets into a cab, and the woman driving the cab asks him, what's your name? And so he tells her it's Butch. And then she asks him, Butch, what does it mean? And Butch's answer, while tragic, perfectly sums up the postmodern condition. Butch says, it doesn't mean anything, honey. You're in America. Names don't mean anything here. But when Matthew was writing his gospel, names meant everything. They were the primary symbol of your identity. Now, when the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and told him that Mary would bear a son, it was the angel that named the child, commanding Joseph that you shall call his name Jesus. See, this name, Jesus, Yeshua, told Joseph immediately something about the destiny and calling that was on this child. Yeshua literally means salvation. So this baby is going to be a saviour of his people. OK, wonderful. Next question. What's the saviour going to save his people from? Well, thankfully, the angel tells us, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? Because if you take just a moment to think about the message of the gospel that the Church of Jesus Christ preaches almost exclusively, certainly since the ministry of John Wesley, the great father of Methodism, the gospel we preach doesn't promise that Jesus will save you from your sins. No, our good news is that Jesus will save you from the penalty of your sins. And that is something very different. Give your life to Jesus. Ask him to be your saviour. Because if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, then you will be saved. From what? From hell. Believe in Jesus and pick up your first class ticket to heaven at the check-in desk upon your demise. But that is not what the scripture says. I mean, by the definition laid out by Paul in Romans, to believe in the heart and confess with the mouth, that I'm saved, I'm a child of God, I've received the spirit by whom I cry out, Abba, Father. But the elephant in the room is that I still sin every day, multiple times a day. And you do probably too. And the truth is that no matter how hard you try, you won't ever be able to stop sinning. In fact, the act of trying will probably cause you to sin more. Try not to sin once a day and see how you get on. So although I may have been saved from the penalty of my sin, have I actually been saved from my sins? Because from where I'm sitting, it doesn't exactly seem like it. So what then did the angel mean? Well, ask yourself the question, what is sin? Where does it come from? Well, basically, sin is caused by doing that which God tells us not to do. But why would someone do that? Why would someone expressly do what God tells them not to do? Well, maybe because they think that they know a better way, which actually means that they don't believe that God knows the best way. Simply put, sin is a lack of belief that God is who he says he is. And so when God says, I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory, I say, I don't know if I believe that's true. So that, that means I need to supply all my own needs according to whatever it is that I can get my hands on. So I'm perfectly entitled to steal something. Maybe I don't believe that God has Miss Wright waiting for me somewhere. So instead, I'm happy to sleep with Miss Wright now and therefore I'm committing adultery. Sin is a lack of belief. And the thing about unbelief is that it cannot be forgiven. Do you remember the only sin that Jesus said cannot be forgiven? It was the sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit, which Jesus said to the Pharisees when they accused him of casting out demons by the power of Satan. They didn't believe that it was God doing the work, and so they attributed God's work to the devil. And that is the definition of blasphemy. 
which is the one sin that can never be forgiven, but it can be repented from. You see, God sent Jesus to save his people from their sins. Jesus came to show people the truth of who God is. Because if you know who God is, maybe you will trust him. And if you trust him, maybe you'll believe him. Maybe you'll believe not only that what he says is true, but that what he says is best for you. May you know his grace and peace this day.